You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis with an addendum to yesterday's feast day quick take on Pope St. Gregory the Great. One of the first four great doctors of the church, Pope St. Gregory was born in the year 540 AD. A citizen of Rome, he was appointed chief magistrate of Rome at the age of 34 and became a priest during the next year. His election to the papacy in 590 was by unanimous vote of the cardinals. St. Gregory the Great is known for his prolific writing, for his perfecting of the liturgy, and his effort toward making the prayers and rubrics of the Mass truly universal. He is the Gregory of the Gregorian chant, and the patron saint of musicians, singers, students, and teachers. He received his eternal reward on March 12, 604 A.D. For a less quick quick take on St. Gregory the Great, please refer to yesterday's submission, which goes into more of the greatness of the 63rd Pope after St. Peter, including where the title Great comes from. Today, I wanted to share an interesting side note to the legacy of Pope St. Gregory concerning a most unlikely of topics, sneezing. Almost all cultures have some kind of ritual phrase to offer for a sneeze. The ancient Greeks, for instance, the American Indians, the rabbinical Jews, and many Asian cultures wouldn't let a sneeze go by without some kind of polite refrain. This is chiefly because most of these groups believed sneezes could be mortal, that the soul might literally leave the body through the mouth during a sneeze. As silly as this probably would have sounded to most of us five years ago, I think we've been witnessing these last couple years a similar kind of deathly fear of sneezes once again. And so, seeing as we haven't quite finished with cold season yet either, are poised on the verge of spring hay fever season, and because yesterday happened to be the feast of Pope St. Gregory the Great, now seems a good time to address the topic of Sneezing and Catholicism. God bless you. Why do we say that when someone sneezes? Pope St. Gregory, having sat upon the throne of Peter from September of 590 to March of 604, is known for many marvelous accomplishments, not the least of which, though it is not well known, includes his influence over the ending of the great Roman plague of his era. Romans were expiring by the dozens daily, Even the Pope himself, Pelagius II, had succumbed to the pestilence. Anyone with church history bells ringing in their heads now, trying to recall why the word Pelagian sounds so alarming? This Pelagius had nothing to do with the heretic from about a century earlier. Apparently, Pelagius was just a common name at the time. Anyway, at the time of this plague, around 589 AD, St. Gregory, though well known for his holiness, had not yet risen to the papacy. His influence in Rome was already established, however, so the people of the holy city, desperate for the end of the sickness and death, turned to the holy Benedictine, our St. Gregory, begging for help. His response, prayer first and foremost. And then, with holy inspiration, he organized a great procession through the city to end at the church of St. Mary Major. And so it happened. Great crowds amassed, the well and the suffering together, traversing the streets united in prayer. St. Gregory, who some histories report was ill at the time, met the crowd at the bridge of St. Peter's, carrying in his arms the famous icon of the Blessed Virgin painted by St. Luke. Raising aloft the holy image, the crowd heard angelic voices crying out, Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia! St. Gregory answered, Pray for us to God, Alleluia! And a vision of the archangel St. Michael, holding a flaming sword aloft, appeared above the tomb of Emperor Hadrian. It is said that at the slashing of the angelic sword through the air, the atmosphere became instantly less palling, and many accounts from the time record that the spread of the plague ended at that moment. To this day, the tomb of Hadrian is called the Castle of San Angelo, in memory of this visit of St. Michael. Pilgrims to Rome can see the statue of St. Michael there that has marked the event through the centuries. But what does this have to do with sneezing? Let me say, first of all, that this is not a legend drifting down through the ages. It's actually documented, and a good thing because it is rather remarkable. 
Apparently, this particular plague was of an unusual variety. Its passing was marked by the repeated sneezing and yawning of those recovering. Now remember, and it's key to note, that after St. Michael announced the end of the plague, there were no new cases, but those who were ill still needed to go through the healing process, so there was copious sneezing and yawning all over town. St. Gregory, having been unanimously elected Pope soon after the miracle, made a decree, cooperating in the spirit of the miracle and acknowledging God as the great physician. Henceforth, the proper and necessary response to sneezes was prescribed, God bless you. And when someone yawned, the correct response was to be a sign of the cross drawn over the mouth with the fingers. Now you know. The custom of asking God's blessing on someone who sneezes has lived down to our day a millennium and a half later. And it is a good thing. Regardless of the reason for a sneeze, it's a courteous way of showing our concern for the health of another and an easy way to sneak in a little prayer for them to boot. But I know what you're thinking about the yawning thing. It's easy to see how Pope St. Gregory's recommendation for that didn't catch on. Can you imagine the uproar if you went around touching people's mouths these days? Though, honestly, the multitudes of blessings would undoubtedly do far more good than people realize. One thing's for sure. If you thought someone was going to run over and bless your lips, you might, you might avoid yawning. So, St. Gregory. His influence is still alive in so many ways today. From what is often called the most perfect of all music, the Gregorian chant, to the conversion of Western Europe, to the protocol for sneezing, perhaps the last remnant of a specifically Christian idiom used commonly in the world today. And no better phrase to use with a real intention, instead of slap dashing it off automatically to cover that awkward moment after someone suddenly sneezes. We can't show better love and care than to wish God's blessing on folks, even if we know their mortal souls are not going to escape out of their mouths when they sneeze. Every person is precious, every moment is vital, and in need of blessing, today more than ever. Take advantage of hay fever season to pray blessings on people. But don't hesitate to say these words often, regardless. You know it was the custom in Catholic countries in days of old to greet and take leave of one another with specifically Catholic phrases. What better time than now to bring God back into the vernacular, sneeze or no sneeze. Pope St. Gregory, pray for our world, ailing in body and soul. This is Lisa signing off. God bless you. You've been listening to the Catholic Family Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal, and you can reach Kevin at kevin89davis at gmail.com. Ad maiorem de gloriam. All for the greater glory of God.